Hey everybody, this is Alan Fine. I'm here with Gus Antorcha, who you know is the president of Holland America Lines. And we are about, I'm about to, you're not traveling, but I'm about to go on the uh, New Rotterdam. That's New Rotterdam, N-E-W, <laughs> New Rotterdam. And uh, this is Insider Travel Report. So let's play a little game of Battleship. So when do you project that you have 11 ships? When do you think they'll all be finally out and running? So our plan right now is for all the ships to be sailing late spring. Uh, in the March, April, May time frame, we'll bring um, the second half. We really divided the fleet into two halves. Uh, the first six ships will start by December, um, Caribbean and Southern California. Um, and then the, the second half will really come online in the late spring time period. When you first started, didn't you start around July, wasn't it? Sure. We, we first first ship was which? Uh, New Amsterdam in Alaska was the first right. ship, and then Eurodam in Europe was the second ship. And so that, that was July, and then you know, we've added Rotterdam. We've at, we're, we're now adding uh, um, uh, Koningsdam started a few weeks ago in San Diego, and then we'll be adding Zyderdam and, uh, and um, a New Stantam here in Florida. So then you're saying that by spring or whatever, well, it's too soon to know about Canada and, Ala and Australia? Well, cruising in Australia, yes, it's too soon. Cruising for Australians is open now. And they can start, I mean, we don't know the details yet, but they can start, I think, traveling abroad in December. So we're, we're happy about that news. Um, so, but we don't know about cruising in Australia just yet. The, the reason the last five ships uh, we're waiting to the spring is because that's really when the summer season starts and we could start up the ships in Alaska in Europe. Um, during the winter, those ships are, you know, you know it's a hallmark of Holland America, they're, they're sailing the world. But well, that's, that's my next question is, uh, Holland America's ready, but is the world ready for the world cruise? I hope they're ready. I hope we're all ready. We're, our mariners are ready. Um, I think everyone's excited about getting back to to doing what they love, which is which is traveling, um, but we think it'll be into into late 22, early 23 before we can start doing some of those more unique um, itineraries. And so, at this time, uh, you've been able to get a lot of your crew back. What percentage do you think? Well, all the ships are effectively fully staffed, and so um, you know we we've had no trouble with people wanting to return to work with us. They love working for All in America. They love serving our guests. Um, it's been more of an issue of visas and vaccines and, and travel, which has been uh, difficult and continues to be difficult in some regions of the world. Um, we are now vaccinating our own team members, and so we took that out of the equation. But, uh, you know, it's logistically it's still a lot of work, but we have uh, no shortage of people that want to. Well, but it's important because these are, these are the people that uh, give your service and that uh, the, the guests love so much. Uh, no, a absolutely. We're 100% we're focused on bringing back our team members that know what we do and do it so well to onboard the ships. And like I said, we, we've had no lack of interest, excitement to, to rejoin, rejoin the fleet. So now slowly but surely your capacities are going to go up? Uh, yep, we're, we're starting, and uh, I've said, said this before, we, we start 60 to 75 percent uh, for, for those initial couple of months, and then we start to take the occupancies up. And so I think through the end of the year, given all the restarts, that's probably where the occupancies will, will land. Maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower. Um, it's a little hard to tell, but but it'll it'll be in that range, and and then we'll progressively start taking them. Taking and then them. and your vaccine rule is what? Uh, we operate vaccinated voyages, uh, which means you need to be vaccinated uh, 14 last dose of whatever vaccine you're taking, uh, 14 days prior to sailing. And we operate under the CDC guidelines and, and the procedure set up with the CDC, which is we have to achieve at least a 95% vaccination rate on board, which is uh, the approach we're taking. We're well, well above that. So the announcement, though, I mean, you haven't been able to take kids, but now with vaccines being approved, what's the, the big announcement? Yeah, we're very excited that the, the, the CDC has approved vaccinations for five and older. Um, it is wonderful to take your family on a cruise and to really celebrate that. We just launched a promotion yesterday. We, we, we had the release that, uh, that uh, children will be sailing free in, in the cabin with two adults. Uh, children will be sailing free on Holland America through May, I believe, May of, uh, of 22. So that's exciting. and we'll Take advantage of that. It, it's a great opportunity. It's an easy sell. 
uh, when, when, when kids are free and, uh, you know, holiday sailing, spring break sailing, and New Year's sailing, when the kids are off of school, why not, why not go on, on a cruise? And it is a safe environment, especially when compared to the other alternatives uh, guests are thinking about operating vaccinated voyages. We have significant uh, upgrades to our protocols on board, working with the CDC and health experts. So it's a very, very safe environment to, uh, to vacation with, with your family. All right, so let's talk about the new ship, Rotterdam. Yeah. Why Rotterdam? Again, how many predecessors? And, and This is number seven okay. in a long line and a, a long history of having a Rotterdam in the fleet. It was the first, it was the first ship in the fleet. Uh, how long ago was that? 100, 150 years ago. Next year, it'll be 150. Uh, this fall is actually 150 from the first voyage before the company was incorporated under Holland America Line. Uh, there's always been a Rotterdam. And so uh, we sold Rotterdam 6 last summer. And it, that was right at the point that we were to, you know, we still could change the name of, of, of this vessel. And I was, it was what? It was Ryan Dam. Right. Um, so it's Rotterdam now, and, and uh, you know, the, our history is important. Our traditions are important, and um, it was important to acknowledge that. And, and so that was a very easy decision. I think I made it week two in the job or something like that. It was, it was very easy. So wait, but, but tradition is upheld also with godmothers. Um, that's right. Um, our godmother for the Rotterdam will be Princess Marguerite. There's a long tradition with the royal family in the Netherlands. Uh, with Holland America and the Royal Family. We were founded in Rotterdam, and so that's where we're looking at making the naming. And we have a whole series, we'll, we'll, we'll begin to get this information out, but we have a lot of events, a lot of unique sailings, a lot of special things we're doing around the 150th. Um, and so next year we'll start that, we'll have Rotterdam in Rotterdam with the naming, Princess Marguerite. We're actually recreating the first voyage when Rotterdam comes back to the US. It'll be uh, Rotterdam, New York, which is the old, and so we're going to have all kinds of content on board that some historicals, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very important, you know. But, but you, can, you can actually sail a ship without it being named. I mean, you're, it's not until, so, so, so it, 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 was, uh, it left Amsterdam in, uh, in, in October. It had a 14-day cruise here, uh, and then in April it's going back. Is that when the naming will be? Yeah, the, the, the naming is a, um, it's like a formal type type event ceremony on, on the ship. So you can you can definitely operate the ship. We are operating the ship without naming. Now that said, there's all kinds of traditions we do at the yard. There's, there's a coin ceremony. There's, you know, there's the blessing of a ship. And that's when the godmother gets, uh, no, we did that oh, so that's already done. In, in, in the yard and there's all these. Because you can't cruise without the godmother, but you can cruise without the naming. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> okay. exactly. No one's gonna pull you over. <laughs> no, <laughs> where's your certificate? <laughs> no, 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 but. Um, the, I don't know what the, the value of the the new Rotterdam is, but you got to add another four point one million dollars for the artwork. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, the artwork. You know, it was it was very interesting. The team before me and and um, really chose this direction, which I think is wonderful. As you make your way across across uh, through the ship, it's it's themed around uh, music. There's a, in one of the landings. Uh, there's an art piece that's sort of when you look at music and and sort of the the decibels or however it's read there's kind of a, a sculpture in that so it's, it's weaved into all kinds of places in the ship I think it's it's quite beautiful and it's very symbolic of the direction we've taken the guest experience around you know all the upgrades and the enhancements we made to the food product we're well known for food now and we just took it to another level and then all the investments behind music and, and music really comes alive uh, on the holiday on the ship nation. absolutely absolutely Absolutely. We won't even talk about that because we've done that yeah, so much. Right. A lot. But, it, but it's, it's yeah. just sort of the art. But, the, but, but right. just for a second, the, 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 the music walk. Yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible. I, I, you know, I've, I've now sailed a couple of times, and uh, it's, it's awesome. You've got rock, you've got piano, you've got the blues club. It's all sort of happening in the Lincoln same Center. area. Lincoln, Lincoln Center, or I forget. I always, I, so now in Europe, I, I'd always go by for a drink before dinner, and it was just amazing and they're interpreting it's sort of thematic they interpret rock some nights other times it's more classical it's it's really and they talk about the pieces and what they're doing it is really it's really special travel advisors want to know um, what are the new di what are the differences from the previous ships I, I i think for the most part rotterdam is part of that very successful pinnacle class 
that, that we built. There are tweaks as we've learned. There's tweaks and adjustments. Club Orange is new. It, it, it is, in fact, for our sweet customers, it's an all-inclusive specialty dining restaurant is the way I like to think about it. It's, it's sort of of that size and that service level. Uh, we've made some tweaks and upgrades to, to the cabins, looking at where we put shelving and lighting and, and things of the sort. So it's, it's really a, 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 an evolution within the Pinnacle class rather than a big you know, big, big revolution, big departure from, from what we've done. What, what would you say are some of the key features, like your favorite new things or things that we should focus on that will show the travel advisor? Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple places on the ship that I really like that as a travel advisor, you're thinking about, you know, your guest and, and, and how to describe or talk to them uh, about the ship. First thing I found very different and, and, and quite nice is Lido. It's 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 full service Lido, right? so so there's no self service. It's it's nice. It's it's really nice. Um, it, you know, if you want something more casual than the dining room, but it's it's still sort of an elevated dining experience. I, I find our Lido is quite because unique you're because you're being you're being served and there's there's folks attending you, and so it's it's got that higher level level of service. Dutch Cafe is wonderful. It's it's a long. It's on the thir deck three along the window opposite guest services. It is a great place. It sort of ties gives a nod to our, our, our Dutch heritage, but it's a great coffee shop. Um, you can get hot food there, which is great. So it's kind of this informal place. Uh, specialty dining restaurants are incredible. Rudy Seldemer, it's a very intimate setting. Tamarin's my personal favorite. Um, it's got Nami Sushi, but it also has sort of that Pan-Asian restaurant uh, that's above Lido aft on the ship. Uh, I can go on and on, but no, but do because I'm going to show that I'm going to show them everything you say. You got to see the entertainment venues. I think the Queens Lounge where we do BB Kings and Lincoln Lincoln um, Lincoln Center. Are they different from the uh, like? It is. It's it's a it's a two deck um, uh, lounge. Effectively, you walk through it uh, to do, so so there's a balcony up top, uh, which is which is which is really nice. And then you go then you go forward into these two dueling venues with a bar in the middle called Notes, but you have the Rolling Stones rock room and the Billboard piano player front. That entertainment section of the ship, I think, really comes alive at night, and it's and it's just wonderful to see everyone enjoying themselves. Um, I also like the spa, so if you're going to show the ship, I think our spa is pretty incredible. The Thalasso pool plus, um, you know, the, the 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 different steam rooms that we have is 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 very nice. Um, the gym's huge, which which I. I, I like. I try to go to the gym. I've gone to the gym a little less during the pandemic, but I needed. I wish I was on board more to go to that beautiful gym. Um, it's just a beautiful. It's just a beautiful. Gym. What about the suites and staterooms? I mean, the, the pinnacle suite is. You can't get much better than that. It's it's bigger than probably my first three apartments. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Bathrooms huge. Um, you know, di a, a different uh, cosmetic kind of kind of you know to, to, to do makeup it's got its own little galley which you'd show so if you want to eat there if you want to host some of your friends there in the living room all all the different levels of suites uh are, are very well appointed i find them very elegant the bathrooms in particular are spacious they're well lit there's lots of counter space uh very comfortable especially if you're going on a longer voyage or you want something a little nicer for one of our shorter voyages but a longer voyage you know you're really it's kind of a home away from home and so having that space is, is is pretty awesome. What's the future? New ships in the pipeline? Uh, not right now. I, I'm I'm 100 percent focused on starting up the ones we have. Um, I think that's that's in discussions, and and uh, you know over the next you know several months we'll 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 be laying out our strategy for for new builds. So let's drill down to why we're really here. Uh, we've got. 90,000, oh, more than 95,000 now travel advisors watching and, and they want to know how, how do they get involved and are there any new programs for them so that they, when they get involved, they can come and see and, 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 and the like. Yeah, so first of all, it is extremely important as we rebuild that everyone is really communicating the advantages of cruising, it, the value that we offer now. It's always been, it's always been great. It is really amazing now. You look at what's happening with hotel prices um, in the southern part of the United States, it, they're, they're astronomical. And hotels are struggling with, with labor. You can't, you know, room service sometimes doesn't show up. Uh, you know, your room can't get cleaned every day. I mean, they're, they're, everyone's struggling with labor in the U.S. And, and, and you see it in the service level. So you're paying a lot of money and the service is kind of so-so. We're fully staffed on board. 
it's, a, it's, it's always been a value. Now it's a tremendous value. And, and, and you're, in, you're in one of the safest environments that you can to vacation, whether it's just you or your family or your extended family. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, one of the safest ways to travel and, and, and see the world. And that's really what we all want to start doing again. We want to start traveling, we want to start spending time with the family. The environment we provide is safe. So really telling that story and drawing those comparisons. And we need everybody talking about that, everyone, everyone really making that clear to, to, to the marketplace. That's the best thing everyone can be doing. As far as our programs, um, you know, with the departures, I was very um, impressed. I gave the direction of the team as like, do not cut ports. Holland America is known for all the ports we visit, are, are amazing itineraries all over the world. But we lost four ships. Um, and, and so they, they took the challenge, and we've actually added two ports. We didn't lose ports, we added two ports. Now, I can't, this morning I was trying to run down which two ports it was, but they told me it was two ports, so we're now at 400 something uh, ports of call. Um, so we've been able to preserve those itineraries. You will see more and more of us, more and more of us leaning into uh, those unique voyages. We're probably gonna skew longer, because what we're hearing from um, our mariners and, and our trade partners is that's, that's the uniqueness of Holland America. And so we'll probably skew over the next year or two longer voyages. We can also lash voyages together. We can. A actually, collectors, which is kind of this unique thing in Holland America. I wasn't used to it given you know, my, my history at Carnival. We, we design itineraries so you could take a 7 and a 7. They're different on purpose, and so it's kind of a unique 14-day. Um, I actually met the gentleman that did the ribbon cutting on Koningsdam. Um, he was going to be on for like 30 days. And I was like, wow, enjoy your vacation. He's like, no, no, it's not a vacation. It's a lifestyle. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thank you. <Even> <laughs> so, so that was, you're, you're right. There's, there's, there's collectors and people do two or three voyages at once. But we'll do more long, and, and we're looking at doing more long out of the United States because air, air travel has gotten more difficult. Everyone, everyone knows it. It's just, it's just gotten harder. Uh, airlines are working on it. But the truth is, it, it's harder. And so we're looking at adding more long, 30, 45, 60, 90-day voyages leaving the United States. And so you can see the world from your doorstep. You know, drive to the port, get on the ship, no problems coming in, because we've, we've, we've worked that all through with the CDC and you know, all the health authorities. So you, you leave, you come back, and, and you, know, you don't have to worry about it. Travel advisors should be aware of upcoming promotions? Yep. Yeah, well, we have one right now, which is Kids Sail, kids right. sail Free, and that'll go through, through May. Again, incredible value in time for the holidays mm -hmm. now with this new va vaccination announcement. Um, and we're going to have, you know, leading up to Black Friday and then into Wave, we're going to have a series of, of additional promotions. Um, some of them are on Have It, um, have it All program. We're going to add some some sweeteners to that and, and, and various other promotions that we'll be doing. They want to look up the promotions. Where do they go? So we, we have a website dedicated to the trade. It's www.gohal.com. You gave us a lot of information. Thank you very much for spending this much time. Sure, absolutely. Happy to do that. And then, you know, to all the trade partners out there, you know, we're really starting to come back. And I think if we all focus and work together, you know, we'll really come back stronger than we were before. And so I'm, I'm very happy to spend the time and provide all the information that our partners need. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.